Tonight we visit a man who was born back in the day and he fell in love with a girl from a different world. Falling in love with that girl put him in danger. But he fell in love with her anyway. Tonight he come to tell his story. To tell their story. Now they about from around the early 70s. Uwe had just been locked up. And the streets was crazy. Everybody was scrambling and trying to see who was going to take the lead. But nobody wanted to put themselves in the hot seat, you know. Now, me, I was a nobody. Little everyday kid just trying to steal, you know, from the corner store or, or find somebody bike lying in their yard. You know, my daddy, he go out of town a lot. And, uh, you know, he'd be gone like two, three weeks at a time. And mama had a little job, you know, cleaning at a restaurant. And I was only child. So, you know, you know, I would stay, you know, at my grandma's house all the time. And she stayed in the downstairs apartment. And we was upstairs. And, uh, you know, I had an old school grandma. She was mean as a snake and phony as an $8 bill. <laughs> you know, she didn't like having to watch me. So she basically, you know, just let me do whatever I wanted. Man, and just as long as I came home for the street light, man. And one night we got into the real heated basketball game, man. You know, I know we was young and we all wanted to be ball players and stuff. And in the ghetto, you got to, you know, either know how to sing or, you know, how to play some ball. Because it wasn't no going to college and all that. You know, the thought never crossed it our minds. You know, but we out there, we getting it on and all of a sudden, bang, 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 bang. You know, gunshots go off and then the park cleared out like roaches when you cut them lights on, man. And um, I remember I fell down and I was looking around and. You know, it was like everything around me was just moving in slow motion. The kids was crying and screaming and folk were getting knocked over and it was just straight like crazy. But you know how they say tornadoes had peace in the middle of it? That's where I was. I was in a peaceful little spot right in the middle and I held on to that ball. And I I would never let that ball go because my, my daddy got me that ball. And I ain't unfreeze until everybody was already gone. Now when I finally got up, I looked it around. And, you know, just see if anybody, uh, you know, if nobody was around or whatever, uh, you know, and I ain't see nobody, at least I thought, you know, so I heard a guy like moaning and groaning in pain off a little bit from the, the court. So it sounded like it came from behind the big dumpsters and stuff up next to the school bill. Now, I noticed it was a blood trail that led over there to where the sound came from. I always tried to help folk, so I went over to see what was going on. I figured they must have been the one that got shot and needed some help. Now, I run it over there real quick, and I see the man down up on his knees, and blood coming from everywhere. And the movies don't show it getting shot really like now. Everything was red. Now, you know, I'm, everything was red. It red everywhere, juice everywhere. And I was watching, but I was too scared to get close or even say anything to him, man. Now, when I finally got ready to say something to you, the guy stood up, and he started, like, growling, like a wild animal type thing, you know? And uh, then he took his shirt off, and I seen he had bullet holes all in his body. Now he put his fingers up in the air, and now, uh, you know, I I know this now, this where a lot of folk ain't gonna believe me, but the man fingers started getting longer, like they started growing, and his nails got real long and sharp. And he reached in there, and he pulled them bullets out. I know it sounds crazy, but that man preached in there, and he pulled them bullets right out of her, and it hurt it now, and he screamed the whole time, but, you know, he did it, and uh, after he got that last one out, he started, you know, like, uh, like real straining, right, like, like he tried to take a dump or something, you know, and his skin got scaly, and all the holes in him closed up, and he wiped the blood away, and just went like, you know, like a sigh of relief. I guess it felt good to get all that, um, to get all that, that, um, the bullets out. <laughs> I guess feel good when you can squeeze your bullet out. Now, I tried to turn around and run, but I tripped over my own feet, scraped my knee, and, and uh, let out a little holler, man, and, um, 
you know, just, just uh, and that thing, of course, you know, he heard me or whatever, and I heard him like hiss at me like a like a snake, man. And I turned around, and um, and that man didn't jump, but he like pounced on me like a like a big old lion or something, man. And uh, you know, and 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 when he got on top of me, he stuck his tongue out, and it was long and skinny and split off up, up in like two pieces or whatever right? and went all around my face and he sniffing me like he a dog or something I'm just like please let me go please let me go I'm just a kid man and I said over and over man his mouth opened up his teeth was sharp and they had one of them you know sharp in his mouth and his, and his mouth started to come out something like crocodile mouth do and I'm just screaming like a little girl man and, and right then he got up and ran away faster than any crackhead I ever seen. He must have got some kind of like super hearing or something and heard the uh, popo coming. And he figured, you know, he ain't had time to eat my little scrotting button. You know, maybe when he was sniffing me, I just didn't smell like I tasted good. So, you know, he got on up out of there, man. And, uh, and I wanted to run too because even as a kid, I knew when the popo got there, you know, you ain't want to be nowhere around. And uh, I'm, sure, I'm really surprised they even got there in the first place because, you know, usually it's at least an hour for the police got there. Now, if somebody got reported shot, they get there a little quicker. But if ain't nobody reported actually shot and it's just like gunshots, then it usually take them, uh, you know, <laughs> you take a little while before they show up. But, um, you know, I just laid there looking crazy. You know, and uh they finally found me and asked me what happened. And I couldn't do nothing but crap, man. And, and nobody was dead, so the popo just let me down. And uh, when they seen that, you know, they couldn't get nothing out of me, you know, they said, okay, we're going to take the man on home, man. So it was dark outside now. When I got on, you know, my street, Grandma was sitting on the porch with the belt in her lap. Now, um... You know, the police, man, they could have went on and took me home. He got said he was going to take me home, but then the other guy was like, eh, forget that kid. <laughs> so, uh, you know, forget that kid. So, they just left me there. And, uh, you know, I had to walk on home, and Grandma standing there with the belt. And uh, I said, Grandma, it wasn't my fault. I, she cut me off, and I don't care if you got shot. I told you be here for the street light. So I guess she must have heard about the shooting and figured, you know, so she knows it was a shooting in, but she still, you know, seen the blood on my clothes from the from the guy. But, you know, we dealt with all that after I got my whooping, man. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, so so when she come and she say, uh, what she, what she, what she said that, um, uh, that you almost, like, I don't care if you get shot. I said, well, dang, Grandma, I, I almost pretty much did get shot. This man, she flew down that porch cussing and, <laughs> and praying at the same time. I ain't never seen nobody like my grandma. Be cussing and talking to Jesus all in the same sin. Lord Jesus, I got it. Oh, boy, I'm going to bust your head on I put it in Jesus' name. I ain't never seen nothing like that before in my whole life, but boy, you better not be the one to try to tell her. <laughs> so anyway, you know, it really messed with my head, and I couldn't tell nobody. I mean, you know, I couldn't, man. You know, kids so rough to each other. If word ever got out that I seen a lizard man, you know, I get Jones so bad till I have changed schools. And, you know, I ain't go to the park for a few weeks, and I was scared that that lizard boy was waiting on me. And uh, as soon as I show my face, you know, he going to get me. So I kept asking my friends at school if they believed in monsters and what would they do if they seen one. And one of my friends, a girl, actually kind of paid me some attention when I said, and, you know, when I dropped them little hints about monsters and weird things. Now, now she said she see crazy stuff all the time. And I never spent a whole lot of time with her, but now we were together all the time. And she started telling me how she realized some people walk around with us you know, ain't like the rest of us. And um, it hurt me to hear this because I knew what she was saying was true. And I done seen one of these monsters walk around and pretending to be one of us, you know, up to no good and stuff. 
And I was going to get my head bit off if it weren't for them cops getting there. But one night during a barbecue, everybody, you know, and everybody would barbecue on the weekends. You know, every weekend was was a barbecue, man. You know, it didn't have to be no holidays. And me and her was sitting on somebody's porch and we got to talking. So, you know, uh, I had already told myself that tonight would be the night I'd go ahead and let her know about what I'd been through. And she wouldn't look me in the eyes, though, you know, like all day. And I walked her down the block where it was quiet and told her everything that happened. And she didn't flinch. She didn't even make a confused face. And when I got done, she told me to follow her. And she said she had something to show me. Now I was so happy to finally get it up off my chest that I didn't even feel bad anymore. And even if Lizard Man was out to get me, at least somebody would be around and tell my kids what happened, you know. Somebody tell my grandkids that the granddaddy got ate up by uh, by a, a, a lizard man, you know, back when he was a kid. You know. Yeah, now that I say that, uh, if I got ate by a lizard man, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have had no kids. But that beside the point. Y'all, y'all understand what I'm talking about now, you know. But anyway, uh. So she took me to this alley and asked me to move this old stove that was leaning up against the garage. Now I took everything I had, but I finally got it to move. Now, and there was a hole in the wall, a garage, and we went in. Now I told her there wasn't no light, and she said, "Open the window shade thing up." And it was a small little window, but it was right under the street light, so it let some good beams of light up in there. So I started getting scared. Then I heard the stove move back. Um, like up in front of the hole. So now I went from scared to scared. <laughs> and then uh, in the beams of light, I seen her. But she wasn't my friend no more. And I could tell by looking her eyes. And her eyes was wise and spaced out and mean at the same time. And all the little color parts in there turned to, you know, the, turned, her eyes turned to little slits. Everything, just a little slit. And she starts growling. And I made my way to that stove and I tried to move it, but I couldn't get no leverage on it. Now she stopped growling and started asking me to help her. And um and I did like her, you know. You know, I did like her. And uh and she and she then she started saying, I just wanted to, you know, show you my true self. You know. I started saying, Well, you could have kept lying, you <laughs> know. You could have kept the lie alive. I had no problem with that. So now I stopped messing with the stove and went to the corner and I seen this ladder and found something to bust that window out with. And she said, I knew you were playing games with me. I'm going to get you. And I climbed out that window and cut myself up pretty bad, but I ain't care. I had to get over there where everybody else was. And even a good plate of rib tips couldn't make me feel better tonight. I knew that now I knew that these these lizard folk were just just all around me now. I ain't know who to trust. And the next day was Sunday and we went to church and as a kid I really ain't paid no attention in church, you know. Um Yeah, I'm, I'm just a kid, man, you know, and uh, I understood, you know, what I could understand at the time, but I was still a kid, man, and uh the preacher had been talking to uh, her but, you know, it was a little different because today he was talking about how some people who really ain't who they say they are, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, dang, you know, some people really lying, putting up a front. So I know he wasn't talking about the lizard folk, but that's how I took it, you know. And I kept looking around trying to see if I could catch somebody's eyes change for a quick second. Somebody flipped their tongue out or something. But I ain't look around too much because that was a quick way to get grandma to pop you in the back of the head, boy. You know, don't turn around. <laughs> I don't care what's going on, man. You better keep your eyes front. Now, at church, I didn't want to go outside, so I stayed and, and watched the ball game. And it was a good one. And it took my mind off of everything, and I really just enjoyed it. You know, it's been so long since I could just relax my mind, man. The lizard folk, you know, had me where I about couldn't sleep, worried that they're going to come get me. And I'm watching the game, and I realized I was the only one home. So I said it was the perfect chance to, you know, go get me some drink. Now, Grandma bought this juice stuff that didn't have no name or nothing. It just said grape on the label. 
with a smiley face. That's all that was on there. One no, you know, what no, 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 uh, what you call it? No, no nutrition facts. One no expiration date, none. It just said great with a smiley face on it. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I don't know what they put in that. That must have been back in the day when the, you could put uh, cocaine or something in your in your food before the, the, the and the government didn't check it. Okay, that juice right there, we'd be dang, I'd be dang near ready to kill somebody over a sip of that. So I <laughs> said, yeah, let me go back there. I ain't get too much now, cause you know, Grandma can tell you if you if I got some, but you know, I just just got just enough where I can get that, just get that little rush up off of it now. And, um, uh, you know, so I went back there and got some of that, man, and I got my sugar rush, man, and I seen one of the players do on the TV do a move I'd never seen before, so I figured I need to try that out, man, so I went and got my ball and started dribbling, and I was scared of grandma, you know, so I still couldn't really bounce in the house, you know, comfortably, so, um, you know, I, I went up in the backyard. Now, it wasn't long before I heard the gate open and close, and it was my friend, and she was staring at me with a smile. You know, the, the lizard girl from the night before. And she said, you ain't no kind of friend. How you just leave me in that dark alley like that? What if I got kidnapped or something? And I said, ain't nobody going to kidnap you over there looking like something from a horror movie, girl. And she started walking toward me real slow, just still smiling and stuff, right? And I picked the ball up like I'm going to throw it at her. She ain't even flinch, man. So I throws it at her. And Bobby right in the nose and she screamed. <laughs> I'm ready to hit the corner and hop the fence and turn and leave the alley. And there she was standing right there waiting on me still smiling. And she grabbed hold of me and, and, <laughs> and slapped the taste up out of my mouth. Look, I couldn't taste for, I couldn't taste like I, the, the, the residue of that juice was still in my mouth. But when she got done slapping me, man, even that grape crank juice residue was gone. And I started hollering and stuff and I tried to hit it. It was everywhere I went, she kept popping up. I don't know, that girl was so fat. Everywhere I went, she already didn't beat me up. And I finally got tired and ran into the old storefront that was boarded up. And some winos had opened it up. And usually I ain't go around no wino, but I was desperate to get away from my old girl. And I seen a lady in the store, you know, lying on a cardboard box. And uh, she was so gone, she couldn't even hear me when I bust up in there. And I tried to hide, but I heard somebody right behind me, so I just started looking for me a good, you know, a good head bashing stick. And I grabbed me a piece of metal, and, and I found her, that, you know, that I found, and I, and, I, and I watched her, and she just slid her on in the doorway. And I said, and, uh, I said to her, hey, baby. You know, I tried to get my boosted collars on, <laughs> you know. Hey, baby. Can we just rap for a little bit, baby? Stop scaring me silly and hit me to what's really going on, baby. And she said, promise me that you're not going to stop running from me. You know, you're going to stop running from me, playing all hard to get and stuff. And I played along with it. I kept going. And I said, I don't understand now, baby. But, but now I see that I need to take some time and get to know you. <laughs> you know, and, uh, I don't understand now, but I mean, I didn't understand then, but I, I now see that she was happy to tell somebody normal about her secret, you know, and uh, and she said the ghetto had always, you know, had these lizard folk for, for you know, just that, that, like for generations. And the whole plan was to understand the culture better and to find ways to fit in. And she was just a kid like me, so I don't think she fully understood what she was saying herself. But looking back, I don't, you know, I think I understand why the streets got so messed up. You know, yeah, the hood always been bad. But every year, you know, things were just getting worse and worse. And strangers coming in the neighborhood starting mess. And nobody can answer why, you know, that boy shot that boy up. Or that party the other night got shot up. You know, the whole thing changed. Wasn't even no reason to the stuff no more. And she said her family was powerful, and she hoped she wasn't getting in trouble for talking to me. And I wasn't scared of her no more. I actually wanted to go on, you know, hugs on her. And she's my first love. And yeah, I was young, but I started growing up that moment, and she spilled her heart to me. 
And we hugged and we both started crying. Well, if you think dating a regular girl is crazy, wait till you hear about dating a lizard girl, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Ooh. But it was good. You know, like I say, she was my first true love and and we had so much fun and she just let me jump on her back and carry me all across the hood at lightning speed, jumping from the top of buildings, picking up big heavy stuff and tossing it. And the crazy part was she would go into full lizard mode sometimes to do the real crazy stuff. And she was a beautiful girl, but I guess to admit that lizard mode with all that big, big old, big muscles and scales and Sharp teeth is to this day, it just just do something to me. Excuse me, sir. You are on 10,000 right now. I'm sorry, I'm you sorry. Take it down I just, to 10. I take just, it down to 10. Okay. Now. Okay. Anyway, 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 uh, anyway, anyway, don't judge me now, cause you ain't seen what I done seen, you know. <laughs> but in in two way, she was careful to only hang with me at certain times, though. Right? And I didn't realize at first, though, until she told me we could only see each other at night. Now, of course, I asked, you know, why, and I was kind of mad, cause you know, Grandma wouldn't let me hang out past streetlights. So after taking a few whoopings, I decided I couldn't deal with the pain that day. I told her she was going to have to explain herself because I loved it, her, and I also loved it sitting down. You know? And she started crying and said that her family was in town and that she was scared that something really bad was going to happen. And boy, she wasn't lying either, man. That some of the streets was on fire. Murders every... It was the worst summer we ever had. Murders left and right. Drugs was getting more and more popular and, and unpopular at the same time. And it was so bad, folks didn't even cry at funerals no more. Everybody was just all crying out. And I knew it was them lizards. And I really, you know, I wasn't really too upset because I had already lost loved ones before. So even though I was young, I looked at it like it was just part of life. And one night I snuck out to see her and she told me that they wanted her to do something bad. And I was like, something like what? And she just kept asking me if I would hate her if she did. And I just tell her, you know, I could never hate you. And she said that she had to start giving out drugs to the kids. You know, get them hooked. Then turn around and, and get them to do the dirt for her people. Now, the first time she told me this, I just wrote it off. Like, yeah, I don't really know what to tell you. And then I was like, dang, what if I was one of them kids? And she came to me late one night while I was taking the trash out. And I was like, it was like she was waiting on me. And uh, she came up to me real slow with a paper bag in her hand. It was filled with weed. And some, um, some of that white girl. And at that time, I ain't know nothing about drugs, you know. I just knew that it was either green or it was white. I knew the green got you in trouble, and I know the white got you in a whole, whole lot of trouble. So, you know, there was, it was a little saying that went on. It was like, you know, you can mess with the girl, with the little, little green or something, and I kind of deal with it, but don't mess with the white girl. <laughs> don't mess with that white girl. That's what they tell you, man. And, uh, and uh, I grabbed her real quick and pulled her down into the gangway, and she looked so sad and you know, she wasn't like her folk now. You know, she felt for us regular people, man. She went to school with us. She liked the music we listened to, the games we played, the little corner store snacks and stuff we ate. She liked all that. So it hurt her to have to hurt her friends. So I made a pallet for her in, in that look in the garage. And nobody ever went in the garage because it was so full of junk anyway. And during the day, she can come in, and if my mama was working, she, you know, she can come in at night or whatever. And uh, if mama pop up, she just jump out the window with her lizard powers and be gone, man. So that's what we did. This was the scheme we ran. It was different from day to day, but it was working good. Until one day she jumped out the window when mama got here and jumped from the second floor to the backyard. And up on the garage and into the alley. And I'm watching her do all this from the window. But somebody else was watching. This old wino named Willie. Now, Willie... <laughs> Willie, 
Willie the dang wino was watching the whole thing. I don't know if he seen her come from my window, but he seen her hit that backyard and hit up to the top of that um, the, the dang garage. And um, when I seen that she realized he was there, she froze up for a second. And I saw her hand go behind her back. And I knew she was bringing them claws and was finna rip with her head off. So I tried to get out, but my mom was hanging around the kitchen and I needed to get out the door. So I grabbed the trash bag and pretended like something stank real bad in it. And she was happy to let me go by and take it down to the can. And I got out to the alley in a few seconds and I... And I saw Willie with my girl hands around his neck. And she was in full lizard form. And then she took her physicist and hammered him on the head and face over and over. Threw him against the gates and his head bust, his head bust past the white meat. She went past the white meat and was down into the paint. And now I knew he was dead because it was just juice everywhere. It looked like the Kool-Aid man got tipped over. <laughs> it looked like the dang Kool-Aid man got tipped over. And uh, and I walked a little closer and I was thinking that my baby a killer now. Forget a drug dealer, she a killer now. And she saw me and she started crying. And, and she ran away, but she back in her girl form. And I ain't know if I should help Willie or not. I know he didn't deserve that, but I wouldn't feel get my girl in trouble, but what if he recognized us or something, man? But then I thought if he is alive, ain't no way his memory finna work after a trip to Pound Town like that. Then all of a sudden, now Willie's head started to fix itself, and them dents she put in the head were just popping back out. He was one of them, too. So I got out of there before he sank. I had to find my girl before they found her, man. So I waited for him to leave and started thinking about, you know, where could she be? Or... And it hit me that she probably went back to that garage. So I headed over there just hoping she was there. And, and I know she about 10 times stronger than me, but I felt like I had to protect her, man. Like it was my duty, man. So I grabbed whatever weapon I could find. Found me a rusty pipe that was sharp on the end, and I took soft. And when I got there, I called for, for you know, real quiet, just, you know, just, hey, hey. And she ain't say nothing back, so I tried to move the stove, and it made a lot of noise. And so she finally came and stopped and moved it herself real quick and pulled me inside. She was in her human form, but she had eyes like a lizard. But they was empty, though. Like she had no emotion, and I just stood there looking at her. And she said she was going to kill them all. She was going to take them all out one by one, rip their heads off so they can't heal back next time. And I knew I wasn't no match for no lizard people. I wasn't even no match for JoJo down the street. So, that boy beat me up every time I walked past his house. I used to go around a long way just stop from coming past that boy's house. So, but then I thought, you know, I told her, let's go. Let's get on the train and just go. Just go till we can't go no more. Wherever we end up, we just start new. Me and you can be together forever. And she agreed right away before I could even finish talking. So we jumped up on the train and we rode and we rode and we rode. And if any of them hobos tried to mess with us, my boo would twist them up like a pretzel. So we ain't got nothing to worry about. And we stole stuff off the trains to make money and with her speed and stuff, we never had to worry about getting caught or nothing. And we got us a little room to stay in when we, you know, eventually and built us a little cabin off the grid. And that was our life. And I'm just coming out now to, to uh, you know, say that my my baby passed away. And I'm not, you know, scared for her safety no more. And I'm not scared for my safety. And I just want them lizard folks to know that she lived a long, good life. And she didn't bow down to y'all evil scheme. And all my folks is dead. I went back to see him after all this time in my grandma's house and been told down. 
and it ain't nothing, you know, for me here. So I think so. I just head back out to our cabin and stay there till I die. And it hurts so bad that my heart can't take the pain too much longer. so much that go on in the hood so much that's reported and so much that ain't reported children that deal with the stress of life and death on their shoulders children that deal with stress that a lot of us couldn't imagine Children that deal with more stress than any of us could ever imagine. Until next time.